Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Viewers, we begin the levels topic today, and it's a very short topic, and hopefully we'll end it today as well. Uh, this relates to a narrative in which it is recorded that Hajjaj ibn Yusuf in his times changed the Quran at eleven places. Uh, this narrative has been recorded by Ibn Abi Dawud in his Kitab al-Masahif. And uh, uh, although no Muslim scholar accepts this narrative and uh, all of them reject it because of various reasons which I'll just uh, put before you, but there are some Western scholars who think that Hajjaj was, was responsible for a minor ascension of the Quran as a result of this narrative and some of the other evidence they may be having. Uh, in particular, I'd like to point out Alan Jones and John Gilchrist have surmised that uh, the Hajjaj was responsible for a minor recension of the Quran in which he made these changes. Now, uh, I'll read out this narrative before you and I'll translate it uh, while I re read it out before you because it involves Quranic verses and uh, the changed verse and the original verse is mentioned side by side uh, together with the mention of the name of the surah. So, uh, this narrative has been reported by Of Ibn Abi Jamila and uh, as I said, recorded in, Hajj uh, in uh, Kitab al Masayf of Ibn Abi Dawud. So the words are An Auf ibn Abi Jamila, An Auf ibn Abi Jamila, An al Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, Gayira fi Musafi Usman, Ahad Ashara Harfan. So it says that uh, Auf relates that Hajjaj changed the Musaf of Usman at 11 places. And then he goes on to describe those places. Qal, كانت في البقرة لم يتسنى وانظر بغيرها فغيرها لم يتسنى يعني يتسنى بالها. So as you can see on your screens, the the corrected version and the version uh, which originally was there is being displayed before you also. So this is verse 259 of Surah Baqarah in which he actually changed it and appended a ha to it. The second uh, change that he made was in the 48th verse of Surah Maida, and the words are وَكَانْ فِي الْمَعِدَى شَرِيَةً وَمِنْهَاجَ فَغَيِّرَهَا شِرْعَةً وَمِنْهَاجَ So originally the words were شَرِيَةً وَمِنْهَاجَ and Hajjaj changed them to شِرْعَةً وَمِنْهَاجَ and this is in the 48th verse of Surah Maida. The third change that he made was uh, the words are وَكَانَ فِي يُونُسْ uh, 22nd verse of Surah Yunus, the words are هُوَ الَّذِي يَنْشُرُكُمْ فَغَيَّرَهَا يُسَيِّرُكُمْ so he changed huwallazi yansurukum uh, yansurukum to huwallazi yusayyirukum then the next change uh, is uh, the 45th verse uh, in surah yusuf and the words are wakanat fi yusuf ana atikum bi ta'wilihi fa ghayyaraha ana unabbiukum bi ta'wilihi so ana atikum bi ta'wilihi was changed to ana unabbiukum bi ta'wilihi by hajjaj the next uh, is a group of three changes actually and uh, all these three are found in Surah Mu'minun and uh, they are found respectively in verses 85, 87 and 89. So the words are وَكَانَتْ فِي الْمُؤْمِنِينَ سَيَقُولُونَ لِلَّهِ 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 فَجَعَلَ الْأُخْرَيَانِ Allah Allah. So uh, he changed uh, these three instances in a manner in which the words سَيَقُولُونَ لِلَّهِ which are repeated thrice in these verses in Surah Mu'minun, uh, he made the last two of them to be Allah. So he removed the word Lillah in both of them and he actually uh, changed it to Allah. Uh, the next change is in uh, Surah Shu'ara and he says, وَكَانَتْ فِي شُعْرَى فِي قِسَّةِ النُّوح مِنَ الْمُخْرَجِينَ وَفِي قِسَّةِ الْلُوتِ مِنَ الْمَرْجُومِينَ So, فَغَيِّرَهَا قِسَّةِ النُّوح مِنَ الْمَرْجُومِينَ وَقِسَّةِ الْلُوتِ مِنَ الْمُخْرَجِينَ so in Surah Shura, the verses 116 and 18, in the first of these is mentioned uh, the account of the Prophet Noah, and the second uh, is in, in the second of these uh, instances the account of the Prophet Lot is mentioned. And in the first case, uh, the words are min al mukhrajin and he changed them to min al marjumin. And on the other hand, he did the reverse in the case of the account of Lot, in which the words were min al marjumin in verse 168, and he changed them to min al mukhrajin. So the next change he made was in Surah Zukhruf, verse 32. Uh, the words originally were supposed to be Nahnu qasamna baynahum ma'aishahum and he changed فَغَيَّرَهَا ma'aishatahum. So وَكَانَتْ فِي زُخْرُفْ نَحْنُ قَسَمْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ مَعَيْشَهُمْ فَغَيَّرَهَا مَعَيْشَتَهُمْ So in the 32nd verse of Surah Zukhruf, he changed the words نَحْنُ قَسَمْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ uh, the word actually was Ma'ayishahum and he changed that word to Nahnu uh, to, to Ma'ayishatahum and the word thus became Nahnu Qasamna Ma'ayishatahum. The next change that he made was uh, in Surah Muhammad verse 15 and uh, uh, the words are وَكَانَ فِي الَّذِينَ كَافَرُوا مِن مَا إِنْ غَيْرِ يَاسِنْ فَغَيَّرَهَا مِن مَا إِنْ غَيْرِ آسِنْ So in Surah Muhammad the original words were alleged to be مِن مَا إِنْ غَيْرِ يَاسِنْ and he changed them to مِن مَا إِنْ غَيْرِ آسِنْ 
Uh, and uh, then the, the other change, or the next change that he made, was in the seventh verse of Surah Hadid. And the words originally were, فَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَاتَّقَوْ لَهُمْ أَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ فَغَيِّرَهَا وَأَنْفَقُوا So in place of فَاتَّقَوْ, he placed وَأَنْفَقُوا. And uh, the words would, the final word would be, فَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَأَنْفَقُوا لَهُمْ أَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ and viewers, the last change that he uh, is uh, reported to have made is in Surah uh, Kuvvirat and the 29th, 24th verse of Surah Kuvvirat. Uh, as you can see on, this, on your screen, it has been displayed before you. The words were originally were وَمَا هُوَ عَلَى الْغَيْبِ بِذَنِينَ and the word بِذَنِينَ uh, with the za and فَغَيِّرَهَا بِذَنِينَ So he, Hajjaj, changed the za into a za and the word actually changes. So بِذَنِينَ became بِذَنِينَ so this is the narrative of yours which, have been, which has been recorded by Ibn Abi Dawud in his Kitab al-Masahif and on the basis of which, as I said, uh, there are scholars who view that the Hajjaj was responsible of a minor recension of the Qur'an, but uh, no Muslim scholar uh, actually has uh, accepted this narrative and it, he has, it has, they have pointed out several flaws uh, in this narrative which I will now point out before you. These flaws are found uh, both in the chain of narration and on the text of uh, this narrative. And this narrative occurs twice in the Kitab al Masaif with the same chain of narration. Uh, first of all, Mustafa Azami says that it is highly improbable that such a change would have been made and the Muslim community or those in authority in that community uh, would not have noticed this or would have not reacted uh, to these changes. And uh, to this, uh, uh, Mahmoud Ziyada in his book, Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Muftara alayhi, he points out that it is, if it is supposed that the, the, the Tabi'un and the Taba Tabi'un or, or, the, or the companions who were present uh, living in Iraq, they somehow uh, kept silent on, the, on these changes because of the uh, harsh and brutal personality of uh, Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, then how come uh, people of other adjoining areas did not raise their voice? And uh, also, what, why did not the Caliph of the Muslims uh, raise this voice in this regard? And finally, also says that if he was such a brutal person that perhaps people would have feared to raise their voice or uh, mark their protest, uh, at least after he had died, uh, people should have uh, raised their uh, rejection or uh, their dismay over what Hajjaj has done. But we find nothing of this sort being reported in history. So this is the first point of criticism in this regard. The second point, uh, viewers, I'd like to point out on the authority of Imam al khui and he says that it is uh, the task of uh, changing the Masaif at 11 places is such a huge task uh, to, have, uh, to have been accomplished by, as, uh, by Hajjaj. Uh, it is highly improbable that he would have been successful in this because we find that he was just a governor of a uh, province of the Muslim empire and how could a governor have changed the whole Quran uh, in such a way that it was in all pervasive manner changed at all places in the Muslim empire. Uh, and plus, uh, he adds to this fact, Imam Khui says that historians have recorded the trails of uh, brutality of Hajjaj ibn Yusuf and they wouldn't have spared him in this regard. If this incident had really happened, they would have really pointed out the mis this, this grave uh, incident, this grave measure taken by Hajjaj uh, ibn Yusuf. And finally, uh, Al Khui also says, that uh, whatever Hajjaj could do would have been confined to the Messiah. Of how could this endeavor have ever been possible in erasing what was in the memories of people? So all in all, al khui says that this is an imp absolutely preposterous uh, uh, conclusion and has arisen because of this narrative. And this, this critique of his uh, is on the text of the narrative. Then the third point of critique, viewers, is, is again presented by Mustafa Azami in his history of the Quranic text. And he says that uh, in, by the time of Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, uh, we, we, who we know died in the 90s uh, of, uh, of Hijra, uh, he says that the use of the diacritics was, had not become very common. And since uh, these diacritics were, were not very common, uh, there are many words in the list which he had changed. If, if the diacritics do not exist, then the skeletal text of those Quranic words would exactly be the same. And he has pointed out some examples. I'm just citing two of them, uh, which are being displayed before you on the screen. Thus, we see that uh, the yus word yusayyurukum and yanshurukum, if you can see, the skeletal text could, would be exactly the same if the diacritics are removed. So how could this uh, change have had been affected? Because diacritics, according to him, were very, very sparingly used by the time of Hajjaj. And the second example uh, is unabbi'ukum uh, bita'wilihi and the parallel verse is atikum bita'wilihi. So if unabbi'ukum and atikum, they are 
uh, stripped off their uh, diacritics, uh, they will become very similar. So the point which uh, actually is uh, posited by Azabi is that in the presence of these similar scripts, how would Hajjaj have actually made this possible, made this change possible? And viewers, then uh, we come to the uh, fourth point of criticism, and this has been presented by Al Baqilani is in Nukatul Ansar, and it has a very strong uh, notion behind it, in which uh, Baqilani says that in the times of Hajjaj, he had made a tremendous effort, a very, uh, very all pervasive asset, uh, effort, especially in his province in, in Iraq in Kufa, uh, in which he had. Uh, he had obliterated Spurus Masaif, a, a, a step which was very similar to one of his predecessors, the Caliph Usman, who would have, uh, uh, who did a similar thing when he had destroyed Masaif, uh, which was spurious in nature, and we have seen uh, some of its details in my, one of my earlier talks. So he says that uh, not only this, that uh, uh, like Usman, Hajjaj had embarked upon a massive campaign to eradicate Spurus Masaif, uh, there are uh, several uh, instances and several examples also uh, which we find in history. Thus, he has cited an example in, in which he says that uh, when he, uh, in, in Iraq, he had found certain Messiah in which there were spurious verses, and we find uh, verses like, as shaykhu wa shaykhatu iza zaniya, and similarly, laysa alaykum min fadlum min rabbikum fil mawasim al hajj, and uh, some other similar verses in which there are additions, and the first of which I have cited, uh, Shaykh over Shaykh is actually the famous Rajam verse, which is supposed to be have supposed to have revealed and was uh, was then uh, abrogated. Or uh, still, other people believe that it was not it was though uh, abrogated, but its tilawa is still there. So they call it a mansukul hukum, a mansukul tilawa dunul hukum. But Hajjaj took uh, this as as a, as a as something which was against the Quran, in, and he thought that all these verses which are spurious had to be destroyed. So it is reported by by uh, Bakhilani that he actually instituted a people of five uh, very prominent scholars and reciters and scribes of the Quran, and among them was Hassan al Basri, who led the who led the committee actually. And then we, we have Abu Al Aliya, Nasr ibn Asim, Asim al Jahdari, Ali ibn Asma, Malik ibn Dinar. So they were ordered by Hajjaj to write uh, out the Masayif and then compare it to the Usmanic Mus Musaf, which was then brought over from his descendants and compared. And it was also uh, the mandate of the committee, which, which uh, it was told that if there was a difference between uh, between uh, the uh, committee members, then the view of uh, Hassan Basri, who was the head of the committee, had to prevail. And it is said that after matching the Musaf of Usman, uh, obviously, they, they wrote out their own Qurans, and then after uh, matching the Musaf of Usman uh, with the current Masaif of the people of Kufa, it is said that this committee recommended that the Masaif of the people of Kufa should be changed at 11 places. Uh, and uh, it, this was effectuated. And viewers, in, if there is any kernel of, of evidence of truth in this narrative, then perhaps this could be one area in which uh, the report became distorted. Uh, what actually happened was there were certain wrongly written verses uh, in certain Messiah of Kufa and at 11 places Hajjaj had them corrected. And this report then uh, became recorded in history in a distorted fashion in which uh, the actual words reported were that he had changed the Messiah. Whereas perhaps if this report is considered to be correct, uh, then what we can say is that he had, had corrected the Messiah, not changed them. It, they were wrongly written at certain places and he corrected them. But again, as I said, if at all this incident is regarded to be true, then this perhaps is the only uh, legitimate and acceptable explanation. Uh, Bakilani also goes on to uh, give another example. He says that Hajjaj had also deputed three people, Asim al-Jahdari, Najiya ibn Rum, and Ali ibn Asma, to destroy all the Masaif which were not in conformity with the Musaf of Usman. And then he was also asked to pay uh, a compensation of 60 dirhams to all those people from which they had confiscated these uh, spurious Masaif. Now, these are the two very prominent incidents which uh, Bakilani has mentioned vis-a-vis -vis the campaign and the measure of, uh, of uh, Hajjaj in collecting these spurious Masaif. I would like to add a third point here in this, uh, this uh, a third incident, in fact, and this is that uh, uh, we, we know that Rashid al-Himani, also called Rashid al-Kari, he was appointed specifically by al-Hajjaj to keep an eye on the Masaif and to collect and to correct them wherever they are wrong. So we may, we may note that in the, the words recorded by Ibn Khalwe are, Al-Lazi nazara fil masahif li hajjaj. So he was the person who was responsible for, 
for taking a look and uh, having them, uh, having, uh, to regarding them in a the fact that there is nothing wrong with them and having them corrected. And then we have the words of Al-Halabi who records that الَّذِي كَانَ يُسَحِّهُ الْمَسَاحِفِ أَيَّامًا أَيَّامَ الْحَجَّاجِ بِأَمْرِهِ So he was the person who corrected the Masaif in the times of Hajjaj at his behest, at the directive of Hajjaj himself. So these are the, this, these are the, this was the fourth point of criticism which I just presented before you in which I cited these three incidents which show that Hajjaj himself had actually mm, embarked upon a campaign to correct these Masaif. And as I said, this could be the fact that this correction was wrongly reported as if he had altered the Masaif. And this correction was actually at 11 places as one of the incidents I just uh, mentioned before you also recounts. Now the fifth point of criticism is uh, something which has been put forth by Mustafa Azami and he's, he's of the view that if these alterations really took place, would not they have provided the Abbasids a perfect legitimate plea to exploit uh, and defame the Umayyads because obviously Hajjaj was an Umayyad and we know that Abbasid had, had a lot of uh, venom for them and they uh, raised a number of objections and crit critiques on the Umayyad Caliphate and this could have been a very uh, easy prey for them but we find there's no such thing being reported in history. Now the sixth point of criticism is that the nature of these changes themselves are so trivial that a person like Azami or Mustafa Azami says that what good were these changes because uh, they actually uh, hardly changed the, the respective uh, verses themselves and the accusa accusation he himself says it seems quite baseless. And Al-Baqi Lani says that what good were these changes because they were not helpful in any way uh, in this regard to affirm the caliphate of the uh, Umayyads which uh, we know to whom uh, Hajjaj so willingly submitted. So what good were these changes because they would have played no role uh, between the Abbasid and the Umayyad struggle. So this is the sixth point of criticism which, uh, which I have just put forth. And finally viewers I would add to these six points my own seventh point and that is that this narrative is uh, something which uh, of the nature of uh, those narratives in which if an incident reported in it really occurred, the nature of this incident was such that it should have been reported by numerous people. It should have been reported by numerous people in numerous stages of that uh, narration. But uh, as you can see on the audio, you, should, you shall later see uh, when I criticize the Isna that this is a Khabar Wahid in which uh, there are three people uh, singly reporting them in the first three steps. So, uh, off Ibn Abi Jamila reports this. From him, we have Abad Ibn Suhaib, and then further on, we have Abu Hatim. So, all these three people are reporting them in these single chains of narration. So, how can we uh, imagine that an incident of such huge impact would not have found notice of other people and they would not have reported this? So, this very weak nature of report itself uh, tells us that. This, this incident couldn't have, couldn't have happened because if had it happened, we would find many uh, people reporting uh, this this uh, incident, and not over not only this that we find this narrative to be uh, to be a gharib because uh, uh, in each of the first three tiers of its uh, transmission there are just single people. We also find that there are objections and problems uh, regarding certain narrators which we shall discuss when I come to the crit critique on the chain of narration. So all in all, viewers, this is the critique on the mutton or the text of this narrative which uh, is quite convincing, most of it is quite convincing and in the presence of which it is very very hard or in fact impossible to accept this narrative. Now viewers let's move on to the chain of narration of this narrative. Now as far as the chain of narration of this narrative is concerned you can see that uh, its chart is being displayed before you and uh, there are two people who are extremely suspect in this chain of narration. First of the, uh, is the Auf ibn Abi Jamila and the second person is Abad ibn Suhaib. Now as far as Auf is concerned, I have uh, uh, presented critique on his personality uh, in, uh, in a number of places in these talks, so I'll not repeat my uh, critique on him. You can uh, listen or you've already perhaps listened to one of the earlier talks and, uh, and, uh, posited, and gathered the critique uh, on Auf ibn Abi Jamila. I'll concentrate more on the, on my critique on Abad ibn Suhaib, who, uh, is, uh, who is the person who reports from of ibn Abi Jamila. So let me read out some of the uh, jarh uh, which has been recorded by various Rajal authorities on his personality. Now, Ibn Abi Hatim says that Abu Bakr Abad ibn Suhaib al Kulabi, which is his full name, is Za'if al Hadith, Munkur al Hadith, and Toreka Hadithu. So 
this is a very, very strong, uh, these are very strong uh, terms of empugging uh, of a person. Then Ibn Adi says, and this has been recorded in, in his Al-Jarb al-Tadil, so the, 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 the words that I just said, just said that Zaif al-Hadith, Munkar al-Hadith, Toreka al-Hadith, so these are the words which Ibn Abi Hatim records in his Al-Jarb al-Tadil. Next, we use Ibn Adi and Ibn Hammad told him, uh, uh, Ibn, Ibn Adi says, in fact, Ibn Adi says that Ibn Hammad told him uh, that he is Matruq al-Hadith, that Abad ibn Suhaib is Matruq al-Hadith, and also records that Ali ibn Abdullah abandoned a hundred thousand of his narratives, out of which fifty thousands were from Abad. So he says that Ali ibn Abdullah abandoned a uh, hundred thousand of the total number of narratives that he abandoned was a hundred thousand, and amongst those hundred thousand, fifty thousand were those which were reported by Abad. Ibn Adi also says that in spite of his zurf, yuktabu hadisu, and that there are narrators who call him by Abu Bakr al khulaybi and do not fully name him because he is zarif. So instead of pointing out Abad ibn Suhaib, they restrict themselves to call them to call him Abu Bakr ibn Kule, uh, Abu Bakr al khulaybi so that his actual name is not uh, exposed as and people do not call him zaif. Now Ibn Adi has mentioned this in his Al Kamil fi Zurafa. Now, viewers, let me come to Imam Bukhari, who in his Zorafa al Sagir says that the Muhaddisun have forsaken, uh, forsaken him, and the words are Tarakuhu. Now, An Nasai says that he is Matrukul Hadith. Uh, remember, person, a person who is a Matrukul Hadith is a person who is uh, alleged to be a liar, who is a person who reports, who lies in his narratives, and the person who lies in his narratives is called. Uh, his, his narrations are called Matruq and he himself is called a Matruq al-Hadith person. So an nasai says in his Azurafa wal Matruqeen that he is Matruq al-Hadith. And then viewers uh, Ibn Habban, uh, he says, uh, he has mentioned in his, in his Majruheen and said that he would narrate Manakir from Mashahir and which if heard even by a beginner of this field would be regarded by him to be fabricated. So such would be the heinous nature of this fabrication that even a beginner would easily recognize that these are fabrications. And the bottom line is that he would narrate manakir from mashahir. He would narrate little known narratives or uh, narratives which report something which is against the more sounder narratives uh, from more trustworthy people, from mashahir. And this has been uh, recorded by Ibn Habban in his Al-Majruheen. Now, according to Al-Hasmi, he's also said that he is matruq. Uh, and Hasimi has recorded this in his Majmu al Zawaid. Next, uh, we find uh, that according to Abu Fazl al Maqdisi, he is blamed of fabricating narratives. So he is a person who concocts narratives, and this has been uh, reported by uh, uh, Abu Fazl, Abu Fazl Muhammad ibn Tahir al Maqdisi in his Marifa Tazkira fi Ahadith al Mawdu'a. Now, Azabi says that he is Wahin, and this has been recorded by Azabi in his Al Muqtana fi Sard al Kuna. Shamsuddin Hambali records that according to Ibn, uh, Ibn al-Madini, Zahaba uh, hadithuhu and in the opinion of Ad-Dulabi, he is matruq. Uh, so and this has been recorded by uh, uh, Hambali in his Tanqih Tahqiq Ahadith At-Taghliq. And if, uh, we have Yahya ibn Ma'in say that he did not write anything from Abbad. This has been recorded by ad in uh, Tariq of Yahya ibn Ma'in. And finally, viewers, we have Abu Daud say that he is Saduq, and this has been recorded by Azabi in his Mizan al Etadal. So you can clearly see, viewers, that this, this person, Abad ibn Suhaib, who is a Matruq person, who is a person who is extremely suspect, who is guilty of concocting and fabricating narratives, um, is some, if he's present in some chain, then of course that chain becomes extremely unreliable and suspect and uh, non trustworthy. So in the presence of this uh, evidence, uh, I would say it is sufficient to conclude that the questions which have arisen on the text of the narrative and the frail nature in which this narrative has been reported, as well as on the fact that this, con this narrative contains a person who fabricates uh, uh, narratives, it is, it is uh, very uh, in the fitness of things to believe that this narrative has been totally, con uh, totally unreliable and it cannot be accepted the way it has been reported. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات